I'm about to go in. Tell me that I couldn't do it, but I gotta bring it back. So they're really not with it. Tell me where you're from, where you stay. Not keep it lit from the coast to the bay. Peace on the right. If you guys are looking to buy the cheapest and most reliable Madden coins on the market, head over to buymaddencoins.com. They guarantee a five minute delivery on all purchases and offer 24 7 customer support. Use code MAZE at checkout for 10% off. Hello and welcome back to the channel everybody. Before we get into the video, I would like to formally apologize to you guys. As many of you know, I'm a grad student in school right now and the past week has been pretty crazy. So some of the videos I had planned to upload and record and stuff got delayed. Uh, my apologies on that, but I hope this content makes up for it. I think this is going to be one of my best tip videos all year. This is part two of my Oakland Raiders free ebook and I think that uh, the content I'm going to give in this video is hopefully going to make up for the week of no content at all. That being said though, a lot of the craziness over the past week is behind us. So hopefully in the coming weeks, I can get back on a regular schedule. I'm not gonna make any promises, but uh, that is the goal. And as always guys, before we get into the tips, I'm gonna go over the best and the worst comments of the day. The best comment of the day comes from Lil Airplane, who said, bro, I just looked and saw that you only have 58K. That is insane. I assumed you were at least 500K. Your shit is so good. Thank you, Lil Airplane. I love you, okay? I love you. And the worst comment of the day comes from Logan Crowley, who said, this is how many people didn't laugh or smile at that intro. In 59, you guys liked it. I wasn't really expecting that high of a number. As you can see, I disliked it. But uh, guys, I mean, I'm just, I'm trying my best out here. You know, it's kind of tough sometimes as a YouTuber. I'm just really trying to make you guys laugh. And when you guys, you know, leave comments like that, I just don't really give a fuck. Logan Crowley, you can suck my eight inch cock. You think I give a damn if you laughed at my intro, brother. It's a warning, brother, because if I catch you doing any more fuck shit on my channel, you're going one-on-one -on -one with The Undertaker in hell in a cell. It's like 2.30 in the morning. That took so much energy to do right now. So you're welcome. If you didn't laugh again, then you know what? Then fuck you. Just get fuck you. Getting into the actual video, guys, I am using the Vikings on offense using the Raiders ebook. That was... A source of confusion for a lot of you guys. So I, I feel like I need to specify. This is the Raiders ebook. I'm in the Raiders playbook. I said it before, I'll say it again. I'm using the Vikings with the Raiders playbook. If I get any more comments about the playbook, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm probably not going to do anything except shake my head. I'm just going to shake my head. But the reason I'm using the Vikings is because Adam Thielen has an ability called Slot Apprentice that I feel is necessary to run this scheme to perfection. So, if you are running this scheme and you're following along, you're using Ultimate Team, you're using Regs, make sure you have a receiver with Slot Apprentice. That's the only reason I'm using the Vikings. In the first video, I went over iForm Close. If you guys didn't see that video, I'd recommend going and watching it now. Um, I do want to make an amendment before I get into the new formation, which is Strong Close. And that is out of iForm Close. I originally said I had Wide Receiver out as one of my main audibles. And the reason I'm actually changing this is because in strong close, it has a better version of wide receiver out. So if I'm going to run wide receiver out, I'm going to do it out of strong close. So there's no point in even having it in I form close. So taking that out of my audibles, I'm going to replace it with Y post, which is R1. And the reason is, and there's only one reason I want this play, is if you look at Y post, you see that little baby wheel route from your outside receiver. So if we click on Y post, and let's say, like I said, I primarily run out of I form close. So if we run... Um, our regular like man-to-man -man run defense. And let's say you audible down into I form close. This route right here, if you motion them out, you see it act absolutely toast man coverage. And that's the only reason I have it in there, okay? I'm never going to run this play unless I'm trying to beat man coverage. And that play stock is going to do a great job. All you got to do, like I said, this is the stock play. So if you look at your audibles, like I said, Y post. Inst this is instead of wide receiver out, okay? You just basically going to motion this guy out and you got to motion him. And when you motion hike it, like, it's just, it's beautiful how bad it beats man coverage. But that is an amendment I'm making to the I form close from part one. So if you guys are coming from part one, make sure you keep that in mind. Now, in today's video, we're going to be going over strong close. This, to me, is probably my favorite passing formation in the playbook. Every time I come out in strong close, I'm almost guaranteed to pass the ball. I don't like the runs out of it at all. However, it is under center with a fullback, a running back, and a tight end, which means out of strong close, you can audible to any of these other I forms, okay? And these all have amazing run games. So if somebody comes out and they're not in their run defense, let's say they come out in big dime because you only pass the ball out of strong close, you can audible back down to I form close. And then you can run the stretch, you can run the blast, you can run whatever you guys want. Um, so people are gonna have to respect your run game even if you're not running out of strong close itself. Now in terms of personnel, I like to run it with 
two running backs in here instead of a fullback because like I said, I am passing. So for my Mutt team, I, I put Eric Dickerson at my running back. I put Bo Jackson at my fullback. The reason for this is you motion out this fullback and pass to your fullback a ton. So if you have somebody like Bo Jackson with 99 speed, He's going to get open all the time and make huge plays for you. That's why I think it's important to have two running backs in there. There is also a way you can get a wide receiver in here, but it means you kind of have to cut down on tight end and fullback, and you can't really run the other formations I like. So I, I don't like to run it like that. I basically just like to run it with uh, two running backs. A way you can do that, there's actually a package at the bottom. It's called twin halfback. It basically just subs in your running back two into that fullback slot. As for your slot apprentice wide receiver, I'm actually running my scheme right now with two activated wide receivers. So both of my wide receivers right here have the extra routes that you need for this scheme. Um, so it doesn't really matter what side you put them on. Just put them on whatever side you feel is more comfortable for you. Um, and it's just gonna depend on the different setups on how you use them. As for the audibles you guys are gonna wanna have, there are five passing plays that I actually really like out of this formation. And like I said, I'm never going to run the ball out of this formation. So if I am going to run the ball or it's a look I like for the run game, I'm going to audible to an I form and I'll go over those later on in the ebook. Um, but for now, I like to have all passing plays at a strong close. I have wide receiver out, PA deep, wide trail, and PA deep cross. I'll show you guys the play arts for those. Wide receiver outs at the top. Um, PA deep cross is at the bottom. I actually really like double post as well. I'll go over that in this video also. Um, then I have wide trail at the top there. And PA deep is the one at the bottom. So those are the audibles that I like to have. Again, I'm almost always going to be passing out of this formation. Before I get into any of the passing plays, I just want to show you guys. If you press square and you go over, you can audible back to I form close and you can run stretch. All right. So if they're not respecting the run, you audible right here to stretch whatever side you want to run it to and get big yardage. Okay. Because again, you need them to basically respect your run game once you respect once they respect your run game um, then you can start dotting them up all over the field so to summarize what i'm going to be going over in this episode of the ebook uh first i'm going to go over three different setups for wide receiver out this is probably the staple pass play it's a very nice intermediate pass play with three different setups uh to basically keep your opponent guessing they're never really going to know what's coming uh, and then i'm going to show you pa deep which is a one play touchdown that absolutely shreds cover three probably my favorite one play touchdown against cover three then I'm going to go over a wide trail, which is a one play touchdown and bombs cover two. And then I'm going to go over PA deep cross, which is a more shot play, but it is more of a money play that you can come back to time and time again. It's very similar to PA crossers out of gun split close. Overall, this basically makes up a very powerful high powered passing scheme out of strong close. So here's what wide receiver out looks like stock. Um, I said in my last video, the one constant you're always going to have out of this play is putting Stefan Diggs on a baby hitch. The reason for this is the route combo with Kyle Rudolph and Stephon Diggs is going to get uh, let Rudolph get wide open on that post no matter the zone. So for now, we're what you're essentially going to do with all your setups, you're going to have Thielen on the right side and your fullback, who's Madison right here. I use Bo Jackson in this position. Um, Thielen and Madison is going to have a route, route, route combo and read on one side of the field, and then Rudolph and Diggs is going to have one on the other. If this post route from Rudolph is not user covered, he's going to get open every single time. So if we look, there's no zone that covers that. That was man coverage. Um, so Kyle Rudolph got open, obviously, against man coverage. It's a man-beating route. But every single zone is going to get beat as well. So again, we're just looking at that post route. There's no zone that covers that. You just got to pass lead down if there's a if there's a, a deep blue over the top of him. And pass. I'm, I'm just running against a random play, too. So you guys are seeing this works every time. We're just looking at Kyle Rudolph beating every single zone. That is a cornerback out there who's not playing it. So all the setups you do is going to involve Stefan Diggs on this baby hitch. The reason it's so important is because this pulls down every single zone that's going to be in this area, okay? They're all going to cover the hitch and stay on him. Look at he's, his feet are stopped right there, and that lets Rudolph get open behind him. There's no deep zone that's going to be able to come up and play that. There's no uh, flat zone that's going to play back on it. It's all, every flat zone and everything is going to cover this hitch, and then Rudolph's going to come wide open. So this has to be user covered. If it's not user covered... You're throwing that every single time. If your opponent's heavy blitzing you, you're throwing the baby hitch, okay? So this is going to require user attention every single time. And like I said, if they are not user uh, covering that, it's going to be it's going to be a dot, okay? So that's going to be open every time unless user covered. So the point of that is to get the user covering the post route. If he's not, you throw it. Then that brings us to the backside, okay? We got Thielen and Madison for a new route combo. So, there's a few different ways you can run this. The reason I like having Thielen on that backside is because you can have him on a, you put him on a corner route, all right? 
And again, this is essentially going to get open against any zone. You motion hike it. And that's just going to be a dot all day, especially if you have something like post flag elite. That is going to be an absolute laser. So again, we have two sides of the field we're looking at here. We got a corner on the right side, and then we got a post on the left side. All right, the user is going to have to cover one of them. And if if the user or there's some zone that's covering this um, motion snapped corner, this is a flat zone right here. You see, that was man coverage, and that got boxed. So if you don't have any abilities on your wide receiver, that could get boxed. However, if you do have post flag elite, there's no way in hell anybody's covering that man coverage. That will beat every single corner in the game no matter what. So again, put post flag elite and some ability on your wide receiver, and you're going to make a read here. There, it's wide open. And uh, again, that's assuming the user is covering that post route. So again, the first setup, again, is digs on the baby hitch, as always. I'm going to block my running back and then Thielen on a corner. And then instead of having Madison, my running back, in or my fullback in that flat, I'm actually going to put him in a wheel because I like the wheel route a little bit better. And then if they're not covering the flats, you can easily hit that wheel. But as you can see there, the corner route's going to get open a lot. Um, if it's not, usually the post is going to be open. So this is the first setup out of wide receiver out. So that was the first setup for wide receiver out. The second one, you're going to want to make sure you're running uh, Thielen and the tight end on the wide side of the field. So um, again, you want your fullback and everyone facing the wide side of the field for this setup. Um, again, you're going to put digs on the baby hitch. Um, so you have that route combo on the left side of the field that needs to be user. Um, again, if they don't user that, you're throwing to Rudolph every single time. Now this time, instead of putting Thielen on a corner route, you're going to leave him where he is on a hitch. And you're going to motion Madison out. Now for me, like I said, this is Bo Jackson. Um, and this is going to be your first read. You're going to be able to throw this almost every time. As long as, if you look at the defense right here, as long as his outside cornerback, Ray Wilson, I don't know how to say his name, but if this outside cornerback who's over the top of your running back that you motioned out is in a deep blue and there's no hard flat underneath, which is going to be almost always. So as long as they're in a cover three or a cover four and they're not playing hard flats, nobody fucking plays hard flats, um, you're going to be able to immediately snap it and throw it to Madison and serve it upfield for a big gain. Let me get on a D line in there. All right, now I'm going to show you guys how it looks. I didn't do a good job of swerving, but you saw I got like 15 to 20 yards by throwing that flat route. I'm going to show you guys once again in the replay. Now, the reason this is, is the guy who's responsible for covering the flats is right here. He's lined up over the top of your slot receiver. And then the deep blue corner is lined up over the top of your uh, running back you motion out. So when this guy runs his route, he gets pressed by that flat defender, which means the flats is completely wide open right here. And then obviously a deep blue is not going to play it. Now, when you throw it, the goal is to click on and swerve. I didn't do a good job of it, but you still see you can turn it upfield and take it for a huge gain. And then in this situation, you're going to have somebody like Bo Jackson with 99 speed against a cornerback like Deion Sanders. You're probably going to make a miss. You're probably going to break a tackle. And sometimes you can take that for like 80 yards. I've done it many times. So I'm going to show you this setup once again. Stephon Diggs on a baby hitch. That should be where their user is. Motion out this running back slash fullback. Let's take a look at the defense and make sure he's not in a hard flat. So he's not in a hard flat again. And you're going to watch this work beautifully once again. See, another 15 yards. Very, very easy read. Now, on defense, if they're running cover three, a lot of times it's going to look like this. And this read is so easy because off the ball, it's going to be obvious if, and if nobody's in the flats. You saw the last time Madison looked wide open. This time again, I'm going to throw it. There's just no one there. He's getting 12 plus every single time. So now let me show you guys what this looks like in a hard flat situation. So we're going to run a cover three once again with a hard flat. Again, your first read is going to be Madison, and you're going to see how different it is. See how he runs right over there? I didn't throw that because the linebacker, I didn't even run my adjustments on the other side of the field. But I'm going to show you guys in the replay what that looked like. Now again, this is a pretty easy read. This is the guy I'm looking at, and you see right as I, instead of pressing, right as I hike the ball, he sprinted. To cover that, you do not throw that ball. It's very easy to see when he's in a hard flat. Um, and then the other thing is if this guy doesn't backpedal and he kind of stays right here, that means he's not in a deep blue and you don't want to throw it then either. So you're just looking at this side of the field. If it stays open over here, you throw it. If people run over there, you don't throw it. It's a really easy read. So that is two setups out of wide receiver out. The third setup, I'm going to go back to the middle of the field for this one, is, again, very simple. There's two ways you can run this third setup. Both of them are essentially the same. As always, put digs on the baby hitch, guys. That is going to be constant in all three of these setups. And then after this, Thielen, you're either going to put him on a slant. I'm going to show you the slant first or a post if you want to use that wide receiver apprentice or slot apprentice. First, I'm going to show you the slant. And this is for quick yardage, okay? If you need, if you need quick yardage, hike it. Pick six. Let's go, baby. 
But this is this slant is going to draw a ton of user attention. So I'd be really careful throwing this because a lot of times that's what the user is going to follow. You lowball that and you see the slant gets open too. So as long as you're throwing the slant relatively early, uh, it's going to be open. I'd recommend lowballing the slant. This is usually the setup I go to. It's like fourth and two and I need like two yards desperately. Um, again, Thielen on a slant and then Hitch on digs on the backside. And then I usually put Bo Jackson or Madison in a wheel route on that side um, just to draw some attention over there too. But again, motion him over. And then a lot of times you, you just wait a little bit. And that's a, that's a quick low pass. Um, possession catch that. You don't want to get nailed over the middle. And then the other way to run it, instead of a slant, you can put Thielen on a post. And that way when you motion him over, you get double posts. And you're basically, uh, whatever the user covers, throw it to the other post. All right, that's basically how I do that. Like, as you can see, the post gets uh, behind uh, the flats there, and that's going to be an easy read, too. So, motioning that guy over on a slant or a post right is, is the third setup. So, to quickly recap, wide receiver out. You got Thielen on a motion corner right there. All right, you got motioning Madison out, keeping Thielen on the hitch, and then you got putting Thielen, putting Thielen on a slant or a post, and then motioning him over. Those are the three ways I set up this play. Um, hopefully, you guys can remember that. That is a lot of info. Moving on to the next play. The next play is an absolute money play. It is PA deep cross. If you guys ran PA crossers out of gun split close, this is essentially the exact same play. So to start out, I'm going to block my running back. And then motion out your fullback. The same, and then now you look at this play. You put him on a slant. That's PA crossers, man. You got the slant, you got the crosser, and then you got Thielen on the deep post. And I'm gonna motion, I'm gonna put my, uh, my tight end on a delay fade, okay? So again, your first read is gonna be that slant. If it's there, just possession catch it over the middle. Get your six, seven, eight. Um, that's going to be consistent. When the user starts covering that, that's when you wait on the crosser. So again, motion this guy out. And again, it's pretty simple. I don't need to say much to you guys, but you essentially got a uh, cover uh, PA crossers um, out of gun split close. It's essentially the same. If you wait, this crosser is going to get wide open. Possession catch that too. When I'm past leading that crosser out, I'm going basically at a like a five o'clock, four o'clock. All right. To, to keep it away. So again, I'm going to go over the setup one more time. I'm not going to spend too much time on this play because it's pretty self-explanatory. Put Motion that guy out. Put him on a slant. That's what your play should look like. You got great blocking. You got six on the line and a running back. So you got seven guys in coverage. If it's blitzing, wait on that guy. Again, if you're using Bo Jackson, I have Bo Jackson at 99 speed. Um, so he's going to get open on that slant all day. You just wait for him to outrun the guy. There's not really many people who are going to run with him. And then the zone beater, of course, is the crosser. Um, and then if he's playing super aggressive, let's say he's using like in a, in a cover three, he's using this guy and he, he tries to play the crosser. That's when you're going to have the post to Thielen wide open if he, if he starts playing super aggressive. So again, one more time, I'm going to throw the crosser this time. Again, money, just possession catch that every time. One more time for good measure. This is essentially you're just going to have to make, make a, a read on the zone. I'm not going to, this isn't really like, a one play touchdown, but this is going to be a money play. Like you can go back to this time and time again and make a read just based on wherever the user goes. Ooh, look at that right there. Beautiful. Now this PA deep cross can be used as a cover two, three, and four beater. I don't normally do it, but as you, you can probably guess that deep post by Thielen can get behind any of these coverages. So to start, I'll show you against the cover three just really quickly. Um, if on defense, we call the cover three. Cover three sky, very simple. And we put Thielen on a corner route. It's very obvious what's going to happen here. Um, Diggs is going to go on the post. Thielen's going to occupy the outside third, and the post is going to get open. So let's run it. As you guys can see, cover three beater, uh, one play touchdown. That is out of PA, crop, the PA deep, whatever I just said. No, what's the play called? All right, guys, so like I said, this was the setup to beat a cover three. In order to beat a cover two and cover four, all you do is motion this guy out and hike it when he's over here, okay? It's it's not, I'm not going to go into it just to save time because we do have a lot of stuff to go over, but um, that is how you do one play touchdowns. Honestly, with all the zoned out safeties in the game right now in Ultimate Team, you can't really get any one play touchdowns right now because everyone's running zoned out and zoned out safeties basically stops all one play touchdowns, so... Um, it is really tough right now to get one play touchdowns. So that's why I'm not going to go into it too much because I don't want you to try to rely on these one play touchdowns and then um, throw interceptions and stuff like that. The next play I'm going to go over, however, is a one play touchdown against cover three. It's pretty simple, guys. Um, I'm basically going to just put uh, Thielen on a corner route. This is the one that works best against cover three. This route by Diggs, that weird 
really deep crosser is better than any post um, at beating a cover three. So on defense, we are in a cover three. And I'm going to show you guys what I did here. I just put Thielen on the corner out once again. And I kind of messed up because I was usering that guy. But as you can see, that is way, way more separation from that middle third safety than the other one was. So um, this one in my favorite is, is, this is my favorite cover three beater. So I'll go over one more time, guys. PA deep. I only really run this when I want to be to cover three. You're going to want to want to run it from the wide side of the field to the short side of the field. All you got to do is put Thielen on a corner route, all right? That route by Diggs is going to get wide open. I'm probably going to block extra guys because, again, you need you need all the blocking you can get. And then if you can roll out, if you have escape artists, whatever. Perfect throw by Kirk Cousins. And look at that. Diggs isn't even that fast, and he's getting wide open. Like I said, though, please do not rely on one-play touchdowns to get you by. Now, this next play, wide trail, I really like against a cover two. This is usually what I run if they're running a cover two. So I'm going to switch to a cover two. Tampa 2 right here. And the reason is, is this route by Diggs is just amazing. This like weird, like really skinny corner. If I run it against this cover 2, look at this. It just gets open. And if I if I had better stick, that would have been a touchdown. So yeah, you know, we look at the cover 2, and then on offense, I'm gonna be running wide trail. It's just that skinny corner by Diggs. He's gonna split the safety and the cloud flat and get to the outside. You pass lead it straight to the sideline. If they do have a zoned out safety playing over the top, a lot of times he'll play that. So what you gotta do in that case, if you do wanna beat this cover two, is you're gonna motion over Thielen and you're gonna motion hike him on a streak, all right? And I'm gonna show you that might make him get a little bit more open. See, that one That one was a little bit more open. So again, this is usually my go-to against a cover two. If it's not open, you have that entire right side of the field to do with whatever you want. What I usually do is I'll put either block my tight end or put him on like an out and then put my slot apprentice guy on a post. And then you can you can do whatever you want really. Like this this is a look I, I, I might give right here. All right, and then if, if I see it, I'm like, oh, it's actually not open. Post over the middle. You know, you have other reads to go to, but like I said, that's primarily what I use against a cover two. So to recap everything I've gone over in my entire scheme, if they're not in their run defense, if they're not respecting your run game, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to audible the I form close slot. I Like any of these I forms, um, I form close is the one I went over in my last video. You're going to run halfback stretch, and you're going to jam it down their throat. Pause. Once they do start respecting your run game, you have them right where you want them. You can start dotting them at a strong close. You got wide receiver out. I showed you guys three different setups for wide receiver out. I showed you guys PA deep, which is going to be a one-play touchdown and absolutely uh, bomb cover three. Y trail is my go-to against a cover two. And then PA deep cross is just overall my money 20, 30-yard pickup play that you're going to be able to go to time and time again. And then over the course of my next few videos, I'm going to show you guys other formations that you can audible to and pass the ball out of. Uh, this one is probably my favorite strictly passing formation. Next video, what I'm going to go over is I form close slot, which is my overall favorite formation in this playbook. So be ready for that, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed and can lab this up. I will say this is something that you're going to have to get used to and get your reads down. It might not be magic for you right when you start running it, but if you do stick with it and get your reads down and kind of learn how to pass out of these different plays against your opponents or what they're running, this is going to be useful at the highest level. So I hope you guys can make use of it somehow. If you did like the video, be sure to leave a like down below and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new. Uh, episode 3 coming out next week. Uh, stay tuned for that, guys, and I will be seeing you guys in the next one. Now I'm on the outside.